This is how you whiten your teeth fast, effectively, safely, and at the best price. I just finished three separate programs on how to whiten your teeth. My dental license is coming up for renewal. And as a dentist, we have to do 50 hours of continuing education every two years. And so I signed up for these three separate programs. One, because I'm constantly asked about how to best whiten your teeth. And secondly, I need to get the hours. And I was curious, is there some new latest and greatest techniques that I'm not aware of? So let's find out uh, if you want the notes. I took a lot of notes throughout these three separate programs. I organized them, and I'm gonna be going through these notes right here in this video, but if you'd like to download a copy, I'll have a link below where you can download a copy of the notes. Now, before we figure out how to remove these stains, let's understand where they came from. Here are the top causes of staining. Number one is foods, coffee, teas, red wine, blueberries. Two, tobacco and smoking products, things so like tobacco chew, cigarettes, cigars, Pipes, smoking marijuana, all of these can stain your teeth. Uh, medications like classically tetracycline stay, uh, staining, uh, and we can whiten that. It does take time, could take two to six months, but we'll talk about that. Uh, fluorosis, we'll talk more about that. That's fluoride that can stain the teeth during the de developmental process. And trauma, if you have a tooth that was hit, that's gone necrotic or dead, uh, that also can stain the tooth. There's two types of staining we need to consider. The first is extrinsic or external staining. That's on the outer layer of the tooth. And when you go to the dentist and they use a, a profi angle, basically they brush your teeth, uh, that, that toothpaste is gonna have an abrasive and they're basically they're gonna be able to brush off a lot of that extrinsic staining. Uh, you can do this at home as well. Most whitening toothpaste are gonna have a combination of like it be slightly abrasive with some chemical whitening. Uh, so that can be semi-effective one to two shades of whitening with just you know taking care of extrinsic stains with a little bit of uh whitening ingredients in the toothpaste which we're going to talk about here in just a second uh so that i wanted to mention i'm gonna have a whole video on toothbrushing and toothpaste coming out soon beyond the scope of this video but i wanted to mention that is kind of level one tooth whitening and in the same realm is some people will try and use activated charcoal for whitening and activated charcoal is quite abrasive to the point where it can actually damage the enamel which you don't want to do because that can expose the layer deeper the dentin and the dentin tends to be more yellow uh the enamel is translucent the dentin more yellowish and so you don't want to damage the enamel to get to the dentin not a good strategy uh so i don't recommend activated charcoal there's not good evidence that it has whitening beyond that which is just like the abrasive removing the extrinsic stains um, now let's talk about the intrinsic staining that's what most of us are concerned with stains that have gone deeper how do we get rid of those now the gold standard still to this day even with the latest ce programs that i went through it's still hydrogen peroxide and so the way this works is hydrogen peroxide uh it oxidizes chromophores. And I'm not gonna get too deep here into the chemistry, but basically it, I, hydrogen peroxide has a low mo molecular weight, so it can penetrate both the enamel and the dentin. And this penetration, by the way, is enhanced by time, heat, uh, large tubules, like young teeth have larger tubules, uh, and light activation. I'm gonna talk more about these things in a second, but basically the hydrogen peroxide is penetrating the enamel, the outer surface, then the dentin, and it oxidizes uh, double carbon bonds that absorb light and it will turn them basically into single bonds which reflect light that makes the tooth appear lighter okay so blue light the blue light that you might have seen like in commercials or you may, if you've had it done it can potentially enhance the whitening process because the chromogens absorb the photon which raise the energy of the carbon bonds making them more unstable and reactive with the hydrogen peroxide okay Hydrogen peroxide is still the gold standard, but what you may see in an ingredient is carbamide peroxide, and it's it breaks down to hydrogen peroxide. It just tends to have fewer side effects. It's more chemically stable, and so if someone that has issues with sensitivity, carbamide peroxide may be a better option. It is slower. It takes two hours to hit max effect, whereas hydrogen peroxide is 30 minutes. Uh, but I was going to mention that. So carbamide peroxide, if you see that, it breaks down to hydrogen peroxide. The ratios are not the same. So a 10% carbamide, carbamide peroxide solution will produce 3.6% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, 
Now, when it comes to getting results, there's really two things. One is the concentration, right? The hydrogen uh, peroxide concentration. And two is the duration or the time on the, te on the teeth. So higher concentration, more time, it's gonna be a faster result and vice versa. A lot of times you'll see these two work you know, antagonistically, meaning high concentration, which you might get like in office dental is going to require less time. Whereas if you're doing an at home solution, which we're going to be talking about, uh, it's going to be a, not as high of a concentration. So basically lower, safer concentration, but you'll need to use it for a little bit more time. The first method you can consider is going into a dentist. This is a great option if you have the money because it's going to be the most expensive. In-office whitening is going to run $600, $800, maybe over $1,000, depends where you are. But in the ballpark, you can expect to expend you know, over $500 in the United States for in-office whitening. Some offices will do it as like to get a new patient to come in, so you'll get a deal. So I'd look for one of those if you're considering in-office whitening. Uh, so in when you go to the dentist, what they're gonna be able to do is, they're like I said, they're gonna be able to use a higher concentration, somewhere between like 20 and 40% hydrogen peroxide. And you wouldn't wanna do this at home because you need to protect your gums, the soft tissues, uh, because they a high concentration of hydrogen peroxide can burn your gums, okay? So what a dentist will do is they'll put something known as a liquid dam, or they, what they should do, a liquid dam that's basically going to protect your gums. Uh, and they're gonna get these results. It'll be, they're generally an hour on appointment. And they, a lot of times they'll do three or four separate applications in that hour. And the results will tend to rebound. So a dentist may actually make a tray for you as well to be like, so you have a combination. They do the big procedure in the office and then they'll give you a tray for some tray whitening when you go home to, as, as touch-ups as well as just to you know, uh, keep the whitening over time. What can you expect? You can expect like one to five shades at least in that first visit, like very noticeable whitening in one uh, visit. And as I mentioned, you might need to do touch-ups, which may become included, but you may spend another 250 or so bucks every touch-up. So just to mention that, they also may give you a remineralization paste. I'll talk more about this in a second, but that's to help decrease the sensitivity post-whitening. And it should last roughly in the ballpark of three to five years is what they say. Like I said, it'll you'll, you'll tend to get the whitening. It'll rebound, meaning the whitening effect will decrease a little bit. You can do these touch-ups. But after that, I mean, the, the shade should be relatively stable for a good amount of time. Uh, and a little touch-up should be all that you need moving forward. What about if you want to do this yourself? Well, we have tons of over-the-counter options. The first thing that we already talked about is toothpaste, which we can get maybe one to two shades by removing extrinsic surface level staining. Most of these whitening toothpaste have peroxide in it. And so you'll not only get the extrinsic polishing off of extrinsic stains, but you'll also get a little bit of the internal um, intrinsic whitening as well with the, with the peroxide that comes in the toothpaste. So that's option number one for the most conservative over the counter option. Number two is mouth rinses. I don't recommend mouth rinses. I did a, uh, a video on nit nitric oxide that I will link and that you can reference below. But in general, I don't recommend mouthwashes that much. They disrupt the microbiome quite a bit, or they can potentially. And it's an important microbiome for one big reason, nitric oxide, nitric oxide production, as well as other regions, uh, reasons. So not my top recommendation, but the rinses can work to some degree. We got gels, which so we can put it in trays, right? So you put in a tray, custom, they can be custom made by a dentist, but you can also custom fit yourself uh, and you put the peroxide gels in them. I don't love these options because one, most people can't do a very good job making a custom tray for themselves. Two, if they overfill it, they can burn their gums. And three, there's just a better option, which I'll get to my top recommendation here in just a second. Um, another option is these whitening pens. Okay for touch-ups. Also wouldn't be my first go-to option for most people. Uh, one of the reasons is you, you you basically paint the peroxide on your teeth, but it's gonna touch your gums right away. And the concentrations are so, uh, it's gonna touch your lips as well. Uh, but the concentrations are so low that it shouldn't burn. Uh, but nonetheless, why irritate the soft tissue if you don't have to? Which brings me to my top recommendation for most people, and that is whitening strips. These have gotten so much better over the years. They first came out in basically 2000. Uh, so in the realm of dentistry, a, a relatively new innovation. Uh, and these are effective. They are pretty fast, uh, pretty safe, and for the for those three, the best price. Uh, and so what happens, the way these work is peroxide is delivered via 
a whitening strip that's going to adhere to the teeth. Okay. And you put the strips and it basically will cover canine to canine, which is all you really need. You know, do you really need to be whitening your back molars? Uh, if you do, then this is not the best solution for that. But if you just want the front white teeth, this is, this will do a great job with that. And I do recommend going with a brand name, basically like Procter and Gamble, just because I was doing a quick sh uh, search before shooting this video. And there are just so many knockoff brands where you just have no idea what you're going to get. So just going with like a classic crest white strip, uh, you can look at the formulation, 10% hydrogen peroxide is what I would probably go to for most people. And you're going to wear these for 30 minutes uh, a day for one to two weeks. And you will see, you'll see results. <laughs> so there was a study done that was actually comparing white strips, uh, done in this manner for 10 days to an in office whitening. And they were extremely comparable. So if you have one to two weeks and you don't mind wearing it for 30 minutes a day, uh, that this is the route I would go for most people. And I wanna talk a little bit about safety here because I mentioned it, we need to dive a little bit deeper. Hydrogen peroxide is relatively safe. It breaks down to oxygen and water. And while it can burn the soft tissue, irritate the soft tissue, if you are going to a dentist, they should protect you from that. If you're using white strips, you're more or less safe from that. My biggest concern with that is these in-home trays uh, because you can have, basically you can get really high concentrations and no one's monitoring that concentration more or less. And no one's monitoring to see how much you put in there. Is it irritating the, the tissues, et cetera. So that, that's the highest risk, I think. Uh, but if used safely, there's been over 200 studies since 1990 on the safety and non-toxicity of the whitening materials made with hydrogen peroxide. And they are not, they do not negatively impact the hardness of enamel in a significant way. I wanna mention this in a second. Uh, and beyond short-term irritations to the gingival tissue, your gum tissue, the soft tissue, uh, there's no long-term issues soft tissue wise as long as they are used kind of as directed. Okay, let's talk sensitivity because 25 to 50% of people are gonna experience some sensitivity post application, and it usually only lasts for 24 to 48 hours, uh, but there are ways we can mitigate it, which I wanna go through. So basically what we wanna do to prevent sensitivity is block dental tubules and prevent fluid flow. You don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna tell you some ways we can do that. And one of the reasons that sensitivity is happening is uh, the whitening can dehydrate the tooth a little bit. Okay. And so, and you can see this, you'll see, if you see some chalkiness, some white chalkiness after whitening the tooth, um, that is not uncommon. It will go away. Uh, but to dehydrate the tooth less, use lower concentration. If you're going for an in office 20 to 40% hydrogen peroxide, uh, application for an hour, then you might want to consider using a, uh, a paste that's going to help decrease sensitivity. So let's go through what some of those are. One, the, a popular one is ACP, which is amorphous calcium phosphate, which basically you're going to use calcium and phosphate ions that are going to help block those dental tubules. There's other uh, paste, MI paste does the same thing. It's a cream uh, with recaldent that releases calcium and phosphate. There are uh, sensitivity toothpastes, toothpaste that use a lot of times potassium nitrate, uh, and that helps decrease sensitivity. And there's also fluoride, varnishes, rinses, gels, toothpaste that can help decrease sensitivity as well. If you're concerned about fluoride, I don't blame you. Uh, beyond the scope of this video, that's also on my two video make list. Uh, so if you wanna hear my thoughts on fluoride, it's coming soon. Uh, I will, if it's already out already, I'll link it below, but if not, go ahead and hit subscribe and I will, so that you get it when it's ready. But that video is coming soon. Last, next, not last, couple things to go here. One is the gum irritation, soft tissue irritation. Uh, this is, I think, one of the biggest benefits of the white strips as well as in office uh, whitening. Those two are gonna put you, the, the gums at least risk of getting irritated and burned in the office. They'll use a liquid dam, a liquid rubber dam. They'll do this isolation technique to make sure you don't get burned. Um, and as well as the strips, they really, if you just look in the mirror and <laughs> use a decent amount of care, uh, you can keep those strips off your, off your gums. Okay. Ricky riskiest, as I was mentioning, are the trays that you're just doing by yourself with who knows what concentration. If you overfill it, then you can really, you can burn your gums. Uh, so last, Risk, last two risks I want to mention is demineralization risk. And so the teeth are in a constant flux of remin and demin, remineralization and demineralization. 
when this is this what we want is we don't want our teeth to get demineralized that weakens them makes them prone to decay okay and so they're classically demineralized by acid everything from acidogenic uh bacteria reduced salivary flow eating carbohydrates eating carbohydrates frequently uh mouth breathing all of these kind of push us in the demineralization path uh but we want to if we have demen we want to balance it with the equal amount of remineralization. And we get mostly get remineralization from saliva and the calcium and phosphate influx from our saliva. But we can also use paste to you know, help this remineralization process, those paste I was just talking about. Last risk I wanna talk about is oxidative stress. As there was this one study I stumbled upon where they used, where they were doing some whitening, let's see, for 14 days. And the blood sample showed an increase and oxidative stress as marked by these three different biomarkers, uh, which could possibly be due to either swallowing or swallowing the whitening peroxide and, and or it penetrating the gum tissue. Uh, so for me, this is just a caution. Like what you want to do, if you do the whitening, you do it appropriately and you don't overdo it. To me, this is not a big concern, but there are people who are if a little is good, a lot is better. And so they overdo whitening. And then, you know, I'd start, you know, considering this risk. So final considerations, and we're going to wrap this video up before whitening. You might want to consider getting a cleaning with a dentist to remove the extrinsic staining to remove calculus. If you don't know about calculus is I'll link, I have a video on dental calculus, uh, but that basically gets rid of the extrinsic you know, the extrinsic external um, staining buildup. And so when you put the strips on, you can just do the intrinsic whitening if, if you're going with the strips route. Next consideration is restorations. Whitening strips or, or hydrogen peroxide, it's, it's not gonna whiten your fillings, your crowns, your dentures, your veneers, okay? It's only gonna work on your natural tooth structure. So if you have fillings on your front teeth, they although they are white, uh, you can have small white fillings on your front teeth that you don't even see right now. But once you whiten your teeth relative to those, you will re you will realize that the filling is not as white as your newly whitened teeth. So that's a consideration. If you're going to get dental restorations done, like you need fillings on these front teeth, you might want to consider whitening your teeth first and then getting the fillings done because the dentist can match those fillings to the newly whitened tooth. Okay, but last thing to mention there is if you're gonna whiten your teeth and then get fillings, you need to wait at least a week uh, because oxygen from the hydrogen peroxide can prevent polymerization of composites and cements, which you don't want. You want those composites and cements to bind tightly. And so you might, so you wanna whiten, you wanna wait. It also gives time for that color to stabilize and then get restorations. And after whitening, I would do my best to avoid the staining foods, the coffees, the teas, tobacco, because if you think of it, a whitening procedure turns the tooth into a little bit more like a sponge and it could soak those stains in a little bit easier in that state. So after whitening, avoid those if you can. Okay, quick recap. When it comes to whitening your teeth, you have many options. My top recommendation for most people's needs that is fast, effective, safe, and getting those three at the best price is the the white strips. The strips are they're simple to use. And for most people's needs, I think that's the way to go. That's not to say in office isn't a great option, as well as there's not other good options as well. The pens and trays can be used uh, effectively as well, as long as they're used with good sense and caution. I do caution not to overdo whitening. And if you want even more details, just download my notes below and you'll have everything you need for deciding what's the best path for you in whitening your teeth. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.